records as it does it. We don't need somebody to come in and say, let's shut it down. All right. Your two minutes, sir. We're now moved to you. As I, as I said, posing the question, the president says it's a V-shaped recovery. You say it's a K-shaped recovery. What's the difference? The difference is millionaires and billionaires like him in the middle of the COVID crisis have done very well. Another billionaires have, raised, have made another $300 billion because of his profligate tax uh, uh, proposal, and he only focused on the market. But you folks at home, you folks living in Scranton and Claymont and all the small towns and working class towns in America, how well are you doing? This guy paid well, a total of seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes. Sir, Any sir, wait, wait, no, sir, it's just the wrong state. Yeah, I understand. Sir. You've agreed to the two minutes, so please let him have it. Do I get my time back? The fact is that he has, in fact, worked on this in a way that he's going to be the first president of the United States to leave office, having fewer jobs in his administration than when he became president. Fewer jobs than when he became president. First one in American history. Secondly, the people who have lost their jobs are those people who have been on the front lines, those people who have been saving our lives, those people who have been out there dying people who've been putting themselves in the way to make sure that we could all try to make it. And the idea that he is insisting that we in go forward and open when you have almost half the states in America with a significant increase in COVID deaths and COVID cases in the United States of America. And he wants to open it up more. Why does he want to open it up? Why doesn't he take care of the America? You can't fix the economy until you fix the COVID crisis. And he has no intention of doing anything about making it better for you all at home in terms of your health and your safety. Schools, why aren't schools open? Because it costs a lot of money to open them safely. You know, they, they were going to give, his administration was going to give the teachers and school students masks. And then they decided, no, couldn't do that because it's not a national emergency not a national emergency. They've done nothing to help small businesses. Nothing. They're closing. One in six is now gone. He ought to get on the job and take care of the needs of the American people so we can open safely. All right. Your time is up, sir. Well, we are going to get to the... I we're have gonna, to respond to that. Well, you both had two minutes, sir. Excuse me. He made a statement. I, so did people you. People want their schools... No, people want their schools open. They don't want to be shut down. They don't want their state shut down. They want their restaurants. I look at New York. It's so sad what's happening in New York. It's almost like a ghost town. And I'm not sure it can ever recover what they've done in New York. People want their places open. They want to get back to their lives. People They'll want be to careful, be safe. but they want their schools open. Okay. Want I'm the one safe. that brought back football. By the way, I brought back Big Ten <laughs> football. It was me, and it, I'm very happy to do it. And <laughs> All right, the people of Ohio wait. are very proud of me. And you know we're how I get found back, out? When we're, took gentlemen, we're going to get to your economic plans going forward in a moment. But first, Mr. President, as you well know, there's a new report that in 2016, the year you were elected president, and 2017, your first year as president, that you paid $750 a year in federal income tax each of those years. I know that you pay a lot of other taxes, but I'm asking you the specific question. Is it true that you paid $750 in federal income taxes each of those two years? I paid millions of dollars in taxes, millions of dollars of income tax. And let me just tell you, there was a story in one of the papers. Show I paid, your tax I paid $38 million one year. I paid $27 million Show us your one tax year. returns. I went... Uh, you'll see it as soon as it's finished. You'll see it. You know, oh. if you want to do, go to the Board of Elections. There's a 118-page or so report that says everything I have, every bank I have, I'm totally under leveraged because the assets are extremely good, and we have a very we have a we, I built Sir, a great. Sir, I'm asking company. you a specific question, which but is. But let me tell you, I, I understand all of that. Your I, tax I understand all of that. But, but let me, I, no, Mr. President, go ahead. I'm asking you a question. Will you tell us how much you paid in federal income taxes in 2016 and 2017? Millions of dollars. You paid millions of dollars? Millions in, of dollars, So yes. not seven hundred Millions of dollars. And you'll get to see I, it. I, and you'll get to when? see it. But and let me Shala? just tell you, Chris, let me just tell you something, that it was the tax laws. I don't want to pay tax. Be before I came here, I was a private developer. I was a private business people. Like every other private person, unless they're stupid, they go through the laws, and that's what it is. He passed a tax bill that gave us all these privileges for depreciation and for 
uh, tax credits. We build the building and we get tax credits like the hotel on Pennsylvania Avenue. You get okay. a massive, which, by the way, was given to me by the Obama administration, if you can believe that. Now, the man got yeah, fired no, 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 right look, after that happened. But Vice President a, Biden, you want to respond? Yeah, I do want to respond. Look, the tax code that made him, the, put him in a position that he pays less tax than a school teacher make and the, uh, on the money a school teacher makes is because of him take he says he's smart because he can take advantage of the tax code and he does take advantage of the tax code that's why i'm going to eliminate the trump tax cuts and we're going to i'm going to eliminate those tax okay. cuts and make sure that we invest in the people who in fact need the help people out there need help but why didn't you do it over 20 the last 25 years because you were president because you weren't president screwing things up you were a senator. And You're the, the worst way, you president vice... America has <laughs> ever had. Hey, hey Come Joe, on. Let, me, let me just tell you, Joe. I've done more in, in 47 months. I've done more than you've done in 47 years, Joe. We've done things that you never even thought of doing, okay. including Gentlemen, fixing the broken military that you gave me, let's, including let's, taking care of we're your talking, vets. Mr. President, we're talking about the economy. I'd like to ask you about your plans going forward, because, uh, Mr. Vice President, your economic plan if you were to be yes, elected no. president, uh, focuses a lot on big government, big taxes, big spending. I want to focus first on the taxes. You propose more than $4 trillion over a decade in new taxes on individuals making more than $400,000 a year and on corporations. President Trump says that that kind of an increase in taxes is going to hurt the economy as it's just coming out of a recession. Well, just take a look at what as the, the analysis been done by Wall Street firms. Points out that my, my economic plan would create 7 million more jobs than his in four years, number one. And number two, it would create an additional $1 trillion in economic growth because it would be about buying American that we have to, we're going to make this federal government spend $600 billion a year on everything from ships to steel to buildings and the like. And under my proposal, we're going to make sure that every penny of that has to be made by a company But, but respectfully, in sir, I'm talking about taxes, not spending. Oh, well, uh, by the way, I'm going to eliminate a significant number of the tax. I'm going to make the... the the corporate tax, 28 percent. It shouldn't be 21 percent. You have 19 company, 91 companies, federal, I mean, in the Fortune 500, who don't pay a single penny in tax, making billions of dollars. Why didn't you do it billions before of when you were vice president because, with Obama? Because you, in fact, passed that. That That's was right. your tax it, proposal. I got it done. And you know what happened? Yeah, you got it done. Our economy and, boomed and like the, it's and never and boomed. The economy well, is Mr. busted. President, let, let me wait, finish. No, let me, Mr. President, let me pick up on that. You would continue your free market approach, lower taxes, more deregulation, correct? Not lower taxes for American people. But, but, but let me, Excuse me. But in, but in Obama's, you talk about the economy booming, it turns out that in Obama's final three years as president, more jobs were created, a million and a half more jobs than in the first three years of your presidency. They had the slowest recovery since, 19, <sighs> economic recovery since 1929. It was the slowest recovery. Also, they took over something that was down here. All you had to do is turn on the lights and you pick up a lot. But they had the what slowest economic recovery since 1929. Let me tell you about the stock market. When the stock market goes up, that means jobs. It also means 401ks. If you got in, if you ever became president with your ideas, you want to terminate my tax, my taxes, I, I'll tell you what, you'll lose half of the companies that have poured in here will leave, and plenty Half of companies, companies that are already here, they'll leave for other places. Have they will leave, here. and you will have a have depression it. the no, likes no, no, no. of which you've never seen. Look, Mr. we Vice inherited it. the worst recession short of a depression in American history. I was asked to bring it back. We were able to have an economic recovery that created the jobs you're talking about. We handed him a booming economy. He blew it. It wasn't he booming. Blew it. He blew it. wasn't it. booming. It, it, was, was, uh, it was the weakest the, recovery well, sir, is since it fair to, Wait, wait. Is it, fair to, is it fair to say he blew it when, in when fact, COVID it was came no. when there was record un low unemployment yeah. before COVID? Yeah, but, but because what he did, even before COVID, manufacturing went in the hole. Manufacturing went in a hole. Excuse number me, one. Chris. Wait. Number two. Chris. Number three. They said they, it would take. They, they, no, you were number two. No. Chris, Chris. 
They said it would this take a miracle something. to bring back manufacturing. I brought back 700,000 jobs. They brought back nothing. They gave up on manufacturing. We Part did of not my regret. standard fare. I'm the guy that he brought totally back the automobile industry. He totally gave up on manufacturing. Right, let him know. We brought back, I was asked to bring back Chrysler and General Motors. We brought them back right here in the state of Ohio and Michigan. He blew it. They're gone. He blew it. And in fact, they're going Ohio had government. the best year yeah. it's ever had last year. Michigan yeah. had the best year they've ever had. That is not Many true. Many car companies not came here. in from Germany, from Japan, not, not, went to Michigan, no, went to no, Ohio. They're not having And Mr. they didn't Vice, come wait, in wait, with wait, you. Mr. Vice President, go ahead. And so you take a look at what he's actually done. He's done very little. His trade deals are the same way. He talks about these great trade deals. You know, he talks about the art of the deal. China's made perfected the art of the steel. We have a higher deficit with China now than we did before. We have the highest deficit trade deficit China with ate Mexico. Your lunch, All right, ate your percent. In, 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 China in, ate your lunch, China ate your lunch, Joe. And but, no wonder uh, your son goes in and he takes out what he takes out uh, billions of dollars, takes out billions of dollars to manage. He makes millions of dollars. And also, Simply while we're at true. it, why Simply is it, true. just out of curiosity, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave your son three and a half million dollars. What did he true. do to deserve it? That what did he do with Barista to of deserve $183,000? None of that, you've, you've asked, none of that is true. You've asked your question, not an answer. None of that is true. Oh, really? Totally he didn't give three and a half Mr. President, oh, it's totally, Mr. President, please. Totally discredited. Question. Totally discredited. And by the way, well, wait, he didn't get three and a half million dollars, Joe? Mr. Vice he got three Mr. And a half President, million dollars. it is not true. Oh, really? Here's, Mr. Oh, President, but Mr. You, it's, a, it's an open discussion, please. No, you, you, it's a fact. I, well, There's, you have not raised an issue. Let the been totally Vice President answer. Discredited. Did Barista there was a pay report. him 183000 a, a month what, what, with what, no what, experience what, in energy? Mit, Mr. Look, President, no my son did nothing wrong at Barista. I think he did. Mr. President, let him answer. He doesn't want to let me answer because he knows I have the truth. His, his position has been totally, thoroughly discredited. By who? And the great. media. By everybody. Well, by the, by media, the media, by our allies, by the World Bank, by, e by everyone has discredited. As a matter of fact, it, matter of fact even President, the people who testified under oath. So let me ask oath, you this. Henry, no, no, oath. go ahead, Mr. Henry, I'm listening to you. People under, he got three and a half he, million he dollars from Moscow. Te he testified under oath and his administration said, I did my job and I did it very well. Oh, really? I did it I'd honorably. Like to know who they are. Every, well, I'll give you the list I'll of the people them. who testified. No, no, go ahead, sir. Sure, you, they, you've already fired most of them because they did some a good job. Some people don't well, do a good here's job. The, with you, Go ahead. You got the the wait a minute. You get the final word, Mr. Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me. This. Hey, hey this let me person. just say to you. No, no, no. I'm no. Mr. President. Three and a half Mr. million, President. Joe. That is simply. Why did not he deserve true. three and a half million it from did, Moscow? Look, here's the deal. We want to talk about families and ethics. I don't want to do that. I mean, his family, we could talk about all night. His family's my already... Family no, no, let him go. My I, family already lost wrote. a fortune by coming down and helping us with government. Ahead, and that's Every, such a... They're right that's here. Mr. President. That's such a Every great. single one of them lost This is not about Mr. my family or his family. It's government. about your family. They didn't the American three people. And a half million he doesn't... Nothing. That's not true. It doesn't want to talk about what you need, you, the American people. It's about you. That's what we're talking about here. All right, that's the, end of the, here. Uh, that's the end of the shouldn't segment. We're, mo money. we're moving on. There's, he didn't take them. Well, Vice very, President, but Chris, no. Can I be honest? It's a very important try question. Try to be honest. No, I, I, I stood, up. No, he stood I, up. I, the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion dollars, if you don't get rid of That is absolutely not true. You're on tape doing it. You're going to have true. Gentlemen. I hate to raise Chris, my voice, but I see it seems to be. Why should I be different than the two of you? So here's the deal. Good point. We have five, six segments. We have ended that segment. We're going to go to the next segment. In that segment, you each are going to have two uninterrupted moments. In those two interrupted minutes, Mr. President, you can say anything you want. I'm going to ask a question about race, but if you want to answer about something else, go ahead. But we, we, I think that the country would be better served if we allowed both people to speak with fewer interruptions. I, I'm appealing to you, sir, to do that. Well, and him too. Well, frankly, you've been doing more interrupting well, than he right, has. that's all right, but he does plenty. Well, less than, <laughs> sir, yeah, less than... plenty. No, he less does. than you have. Let's please continue on. The issue of race. Vice President Biden, you say that President Trump's response to the violence in Charlottesville three years ago when he talked about very fine people on both sides was what directly led you to launch this run for president. Oh, yeah, sure. President Trump, you have often said that you believe you have done more 
for black Americans than any president with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln. My question for the two of you is why should voters trust you rather than your opponent to deal with the race issues facing this country over the next four years? Vice President Biden, you go first. It's about equity and equality. It's about decency. It's about the Constitution. And we have never walked away from trying to require, require equity for everyone, equality for the whole of America. But we've never accomplished it. But we've never walked away from it like he has done. It is true. The reason I got in the race is when those people, close your eyes, remember what those people look like coming out of the fields carrying torches, their veins bulging, spewing, just spewing anti-Semitic bile and accompanied by the Ku Klux Klan. A young woman got killed. And they asked the president what he thought. He said there were very fine people on both sides. No president has ever finish said anything statement. like that. Finish it, the it, it is who's now, who second, it, sir. Second point I'd make to you is that when Floyd was killed, when Mr. Floyd was killed, there was a peaceful protest in front of the White House. What did he do? He came out of his bunker, had the military do use tear gas on him so he could walk across to a church and hold up a Bible. And then what happened after that? The bishop of that very church said that it was the disgrace. The general who was with him said he all he, all he ever wants to do is divide people, not unite people at all. This is a president who has used everything as a dog whistle to try to generate racist hatred, racist division. This is a man who, in fact, you talk about helping African-Americans. One in 1,000 African-Americans has been killed because of the coronavirus. And if he doesn't do something quickly, by the end of the year, one in 500 will have been killed. One in 500 African-Americans. This man, this man is the, is the savior of African-Americans? This man cares at all? This man's done virtually nothing. Look, the fact is that you have to look at what he talks about. You have to look at what he did. And what he did has been disastrous for the African-American community. So, Pre President Trump, you have two minutes. Why should Americans right. trust you over your opponent to deal with racism? He did a crime bill, 1994, where you call them super predators, African Americans, the super predators. And they've no, never sir. forgotten it. They've never forgotten it, Joe. No, no, sir. It's his two minutes. So you did that, and they call you a super predator. And I'm letting people out of jail now that you have treated the African American population community, you have treated the black community about as bad as anybody in this country. You did the 1990, and that's why, if you look at the polls, I'm doing better than any Republican has done in a long time, because they saw what you did. You call them super predators, and you've called them worse than that, because you look back at your testimony over the years, you've called them a lot worse than that. As far as the church is concerned, and as far as the generals are concerned, we just got the support of 200 mil 250 military leaders and generals. Total support. Law enforcement, almost every law enforcement group in the United States. I have Florida, I have Texas, I have Ohio, I have every, excuse me, Portland. The sheriff just came out today and he said, I support President Trump. I don't think you have any law enforcement. You can't even say the word law enforcement because if you say those words, you're going to lose all of your radical left supporters. And why aren't you saying those words, Joe? Why don't you say the words law enforcement? Because you know what? If they called us in Portland, we would put out that fire in a half an hour, but they won't do it because they're run by radical left Democrats. If you look at Chicago, if you look at any place you want to look, Seattle, they heard we were coming in the following day and they put up their hands and we got back Seattle. Minneapolis, we got it back, Joe, because we believe in law and order, but you don't. The top 10 cities and just about the top 40 cities are run by Democrats and, in many cases, radical left. And they've got you wrapped around their finger, Joe, to a point where you don't want to say anything about law and order. And I'll tell you what, the people of this country want and demand law and order, and you're afraid to even say it. All right. I want, to, I want to return to the question of race. Vice President Biden, after the grand jury in the Breonna Taylor case, decided not to charge any of the police with homicide. You said it raises the question, quote, whether justice could be equally applied in America. Do you believe that there is a separate but unequal system of justice for blacks in this country? Yes, there is. There's, system there's systemic injustice in this country, in education, in work, and in 
in, in law enforcement and, and, the, and the way in which it's in, enforced. But look, the vast majority of police officers are good, decent, honorable men and women. They risk their lives every day to take care of us. But there are some bad apples. And when they occur, when they find them, they have to be sorted out. They have to be held accountable. They have to be held accountable. And what I'm going to do as President of the United States is call a, a, together an entire group of people at the White House, well, everything from the civil rights groups to the police officers, the police chiefs, and we're going to work this out. We're going to work this out so we change the way in which we have more transparency in when these things happen. These cops aren't happy to see what happened to, to, to George Floyd. These co cops aren't happy to see what happened to Breonna Taylor. Most don't like it. But we have to have a system where people are held accountable. When, and by the way, violence in response is never appropriate. Never appropriate. Peaceful protest is. Violence is never appropriate. All right, what is peaceful President, protest? When they run through the middle President, of the town Trump, and burn down President your stores Trump, and kill people President all over Trump, the place? That and you is say not peaceful, peaceful protest. President no, Trump, I'm not, not asking. But you say it is. President Trump, I'd like to continue with yes, the issue ahead, of race. Please. I promise we're going to get to the issue of law and order please. in a moment. Right. This month, your administration uh, directed federal agencies to end racial sensitivity training that addresses white privilege or critical race theory. Why did you decide to do that, to end racial sensitivity training? And do you believe that there is systemic racism in this country, sir? I ended it because it's racist. I ended it because a lot of people were complaining that they were asked to do things that were absolutely insane, that it was a radical a revolution that was taking place in our military, uh, in our schools, all over the place, and you know it, and so does what, everybody what, what else. Radical, and he would know. What is oh, radical totally about racist. racial sensitivity training? Sir. If you were a certain person, you had no status in life. It was sort of a reversal. And if you look at the people, we were paying people hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach very bad ideas and, frankly, very sick ideas. And, and really, they were teaching people to hate our country. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that to happen. We have to go back to the core values of this country. They were teaching people that our country is a horrible place, it's a racist place, and they were teaching people to hate our country. And I'm no not going to allow that to happen. Vice President Biden? Nobody's doing that. He's just, he's oh, the you, racist. You, you just don't know. Here's the deal. I, I know a lot more about you this don't than he does. Let him finish. The fact is that there is racial insensitivity. People have to be made aware of what other people feel like, what, what insults them, what is demeaning to them. It's important that people know. They don't want to. Many people don't want to hurt other people's feelings, but it's, it makes a big difference. It makes a gigantic difference in the way a child is able to grow up and have a, self, a sense of self-esteem. It's a little bit like how this guy and, and his friends look down on so many people. They look down their nose on people like Irish Catholics like me and grew up in Scranton. They look down on people who don't have money. They look down on people who are of a different faith. They look down on people who are a different color. In fact, we're all Americans. The only way we're going to bring this country together is bring everybody together. There's nothing we cannot do if we do it together. We can take this on and we can defeat racism Vice in America. President, I mean, President Trump, sir. During the Obama Biden administration, there was tremendous division. There was hatred. You look at uh, Ferguson, you look at, you go to very many places. Look at Oakland. Look what happened in Oakland. Look what happened in Baltimore. Look what happened. On, frankly, it was more violent than what I'm even seeing now. Oh, my but Lord. the reason this is, is that the Democrats that Absolutely run these cities ridiculous. don't want to talk like you about law and order. Violent and you crime. still haven't mentioned Violent Are crime. you in favor of law and order? I'm in favor of law. You follow Are you in favor of law and order? Go yes, I'm in favor You asked a question, let him finish. Law and order. Law and order. Let him answer. Law and order with justice, where people get treated fairly. Okay. And the fact of the matter is, violent crime went down 17 percent, 15 percent in our administration. All right. It's gone up on when, his watch. Went down he, much more. He, he had, all right, we're, we're now, you're, Mr. President, you're going to, Mr. President, you're going to, Mr. President, every record in the Mr. Book. President, you're going to be very happy because we're now going to talk about law and order. Places we had trouble were Democratic-run cities. That's exactly my Democratic. question. There has been a dramatic increase in homicides in America this summer, particularly, and you often blame that on Democratic mayors and Democratic governors, but in fact, there have been equivalent spikes in Republican-led cities like Tulsa and Fort Worth. So the question is, is this really a party issue? 
I think it's a party issue. You can bring in a couple of examples, but if you look at Chicago, what's going on in Chicago, where uh, 53 people were shot and eight died shot. If you look at New York, where it's going up like nobody's ever seen anything, the numbers are going up 100, 150, 200 percent uh, crime. It's, it is cities. crazy what's going on. Republic. And he doesn't want to say law and order because he can't, because he'll lose his radical left supporters. And once he does that, it's over with. But if he ever got to run this country and they ran it the way he would want to run it, we would have we would our suburbs would be gone. By the suburbs. way, our suburbs would be gone, and you would see problems like you've he never seen. He would know a suburb unless he took a wrong turn. Oh, I know suburbs. He would not. So much I was better. Wait, wait, go ahead. I was, wait a minute. I was so raised in the suburbs. This is not 1950. All these dog whistles on racism don't work anymore. Suburbs are by and large integrated. There are as many people today driving their kids to soccer practice and or to uh, black and white and Hispanic in the same car as there have been any time in, in the past. What's, what really is a threat to the suburbs? and their safety, is his failure to deal with COVID. They're dying in the suburbs. His failure to deal with the environment. They're being flooded. They're being burned out because okay. his refusal to do anything. That's why the suburbs are in trouble. I, I do want to talk about this issue of law and order, though. And in the joint recommendation that came from the Biden-Bernie Sanders task force, you talked about, quote, reimagining policing. Yeah. First of all, what does reimagining policing mean, and do you support? It means. Uh, uh, let me, if I might finish the question. What does reimagining policing mean, and do you support the Black Lives Matter uh, call for uh, for community control of policing? Look, what I support is the police having the opportunity to deal with the problems they face. And I'm, not, I'm totally opposed to defunding the police officers. As a matter of fact, police, local police, the only one defunding in his budget calls for a $400 million cut in local law enforcement assistance. They need more assistance. They need, when they show up for a 9-11 call, to have someone with them as a psychologist or psychiatrist to keep them from having to use force and be able to talk people down. We have to have community policing like we had before, where the officers get to know the people in the communities. That's when crime went down. It didn't go up. It went down. And so we have to be engaged. That's not what they're private. talking about, that's Chris. That's well, not what that, he's talking exactly, about, defunding the that, police. That is not true. He doesn't have any would, law would you, support. Look, he has no law enforcement that's support. That's not true. Almost that's nothing. Not, that, look. Oh, really, who do you have? Name one group that supports you. Name one group that came out and supported you. Go look, ahead. Look, think. We have time. We don't have time to do no, anything. No, no. Think so about it. Right. Name folks, one law enforcement folks. group. That came well, I think, out and I think gentlemen, I think I'm going, to I'm going to take back the there moderator's are, I don't role, think there and, are I want, any. and I want to get to another subject, which is the issue of protests in many cities that have turned violent. In Portland, Oregon, especially, we had a, more than a hundred straight days of protests, which I think you would agree. You talk about peaceful protests. Many of those turned into peaceful. riots. Mr. Vice President, you say that people who commit crimes should be held accountable. The question I have, though, is, as the Democratic nominee, and earlier tonight you said that you are the Democratic Party right now, have you ever called the Democratic mayor of Portland or the Democratic governor of Oregon and said, hey, you got to stop this, bring in the National Guard, do whatever it takes, but you stop the days and months of violence in Portland? I don't hold public office now. I am a former vice president. I've made it clear I've made it clear in my public statements that the violence should be prosecuted. It should be prosecuted. And anyone who commits it but should be prosecuted. But you've never called for the people, uh, the, the leader, that. excuse me, sir. You had never called for the leaders in Portland and in Oregon to call and bring they, in the National Guard and knock well, off 100 days of riots. They can, in fact, take care of it if he just stay out of the way. Oh, Look here. Oh, really? Here, oh, really? Here's but the that, thing. That, I sent sir, in the no, wait, U.S. Marshals him a question. to get the killer no, of the that, young man in the middle of the street. They shot him. Uh, and for three Mr. days, President uh, Trump, Trump, Portland President wouldn't Trump, do anything. I had to send in the U.S. Marshals. President they Trump, took care of business. Go ahead, sir. And, and by the way, you know, his own former spokesperson said, you know, riots and chaos and violence help his cause. That's what this is all about. I don't know who said that. I do. Who? I who? think it, Kellyanne Conway. I don't think she said that. She said that. And so here's the all right. But here's the point. Go ahead, the point sir. is that that's what he is keeps trying to rile everything up. He doesn't want to calm things down. Instead of going in and talking to people and saying, let's get everybody together, figure out how to deal with this. What's he do? 
He just pours gasoline in the fire constantly, and every single solitary okay, time. Okay, and, and to end this, button up this segment, I'm going to give you a minute to answer, sir. You have repeatedly well, criticized... Wait, I have to answer his statement. No, you have his repeatedly... Statement. Wait, you have repeat, No, you've been talking back and forth. He made a forth. statement. I'm asking you... I would a, love no, to you know, end it. Sir, I would love to I, end I, it. I, you know, if you want to switch seats... We, we could very quickly. We could do that, but I'd I'm saying no, the National I, Guard, it would be over. There'd be no problem. Okay. But they but don't want to accept the National Guard. You have repeatedly we, criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not? add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud Proud boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing problem. This is, this is a left-wing problem. This is a left-wing problem. White supremacist. Antifa's an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. That's what oh, his really? it's an idea. FBI... His okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, we're then gonna, you know what? No, no, no we're, done, we're done, sir. Everybody, we're moving on to the next. We're moving on to the next. Your over the head, that's not an idea. Everybody Antifa in your administration bad. tells you the truth is a, has a bad idea. Can I tell you what? You have no idea. Antifa, Antifa is a dangerous radical. All right, radical gentlemen, group. we're now moving on to the Trump and, and you Biden be records. With them. They'll overthrow you. When a president, seconds. I'm going to ask a question. When the president seeks a second term, it is generally a referendum on his record. But Vice President Biden, you like to quote one of your dad's sayings, which is, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. And in this case, sir, you are the alternative. Looking at both of your records, I'm going to ask each of you, why should voters elect you president over your opponent? In this segment, President Trump, you go first, two minutes. Because there has never been an administration or president who has done more than I've done in a period of three and a half years. And that's despite the impeachment hoax. And you saw what happened today with Hillary Clinton, where it was a whole big con job. But despite going through all of these things, where I had to fight both flanks and behind me and, uh, and above, there has never been an administration that's done what I've done. The greatest, before COVID came in, the greatest economy in history, lowest unemployment numbers. Everything was good. Everything was going. And by the way, there was unity going to happen. People were calling me for the first time in years. They were calling and they were saying, it's time maybe. And then what happened? We got hit, but now we're building it back up again. A rebuilding of the military, including Space Force and all of the other things. A, a fixing of the, the VA, which was a mess under him. 308,000 people died because they didn't have proper health care. He, he was a gone. mess. And we now got a 91% approval rating at the VA, our vets. We take care of our vets. But we've rebuilt our military. The job that we've done, and, and I'll tell you something, some people say maybe the most important. By the end of the first term, I'll have approximately 300 federal judges and court of appeals judges, 300, and hopefully three great Supreme Court judges, justices. That is a record, the likes of which very few people, and you know one of the reasons I'll have so many judges? Because President Obama and him left me 128 judges to fill. When you leave office, you don't leave any judges. That's like you just don't do that. They left 128 openings. And if I were a member of his party, because they have a little different philosophy, I'd say if you left us 128 openings, you can't be a good president. You can't be a good vice president. But I want to thank you because it gives us almost It'll probably be above that number by the end of this term. I'm sorry. 300 judges, it's a record. Looking at both of your records, why should voters elect you president as opposed to President Under Trump? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Under this president, we become weaker, sicker, poorer, more divided, and more violent. When I was vice president, we inherited a recession. I was asked to fix it. I did. We left him a booming economy, and he caused a recession. With regard to being weaker, the fact is that I've gone head-to-head -head with Putin, 
and made it clear to him we're not going to take any of his stuff. He's Putin's puppy. He still refuses to even say anything to Putin about the bounty on the heads of American soldiers. Your son got three and no, no, no. million dollars. Right. And Mr. by the President, way, Mr. President, my son. Wait a minute. Mr. President, your campaign agreed to both sides would get two-minute answers uninterrupted. Well, your, your side agreed to it. And why don't you observe what your campaign agreed to as a ground rule, okay, sir? He never keeps his word. Can you add no, back, no, 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 I'm not asking. That, that was a rhetorical question. Can you Go add ahead, back sir. 30 seconds? Yeah, okay. Yes, okay. you may have. All right. Go ahead. So, thirdly, we're poor. The billionaires have gotten much, much more wealthy by a tune of over four, three to $400 billion more just since COVID. You in the home, you got less. You're in more trouble than you were before. In terms of being more violent, when we were in office, there were 15% less violence in America than there is today. He's President of the United States. It's on his watch. And with regard to more divided, the nation can't stay divided. We can't be this way. And speaking of my son, the way you talk about the military, the way you talk about them being losers and being and, 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 and just being suckers. My son was in Iraq. He spent a year there. He got, the, he got the Bronze Star. He got the Conspicuous Service Medal. He was not a loser. He was a patriot. And the people left behind oh, there really? were heroes. Really? And I resent Are you talking like about hell. Hunter? Are you talking about I'm Hunter? I'm talking about my son, Bo Biden. You're talking I don't about know. Being I don't a, know Bo. I know Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, you know got thrown, Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. For it wasn't dishonorably. Cocaine use, and he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Once you None became of that vice president, true. he made a fortune in Ukraine, in China, in Moscow, that is simply and various not other places. True. He made my a son, fortune, gentlemen, my son, and he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's, he's, he's fixed it. He's worked on it. And I'm proud of him. But why I'm was he given tens son. of millions right. of dollars? But he wasn't given right. tens of millions of dollars. That is totally, that's Trump, totally President discredited. Trump, we've, already, this, we've already been through Totally we've already, discredited. We've, both, we've already been through this. I think the American people would rather hear about more substantial so subjects. Well, you know, as the moderator, sir, I'm going to make a, know, a judgment when call here. Gets three and a half million okay, dollars right. from the Let's mayor talk about, of Moscow. Let's that talk is about not true. It's a Gentlemen, that report is totally Why discredited. Did he get it? I, I, I Mitt think, Romney on that committee said it wasn't worth taxpayers' money, that report. It was written for political you, reasons. You know, I'd like to talk about climate change. So would I. Okay. The forest fires in the West are raging now. They have burned millions of acres. They have displaced hundreds of thousands of people. When state officials there blame the fires on climate change, Mr. President, you said, I don't think the science knows. Over your four years, you have pulled the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accord. You have rolled back a number of Obama environmental records. What do you believe about the science of climate change and what will you do in the next four years to confront it? I want crystal clean water and air. I want beautiful, clean air. We have now the lowest carbon. If you look at our numbers right now, we are doing phenomenally. But I haven't destroyed our businesses. Our businesses aren't put out of commission. If you look at the Paris Accord, it was a disaster from our standpoint. And people are actually very happy about what's going on because our businesses are doing well. As far as the fires are concerned, you need forest management in addition to everything else. The forest floors are loaded up with trees, dead trees that are years old and they're like tinder and leaves and everything else. You drop a cigarette in there, the whole forest burns down. You've got to have forest management. What do you You've believe, got to have cuts. What do you believe about the science of climate change, sir? Uh, I believe that we have to do everything we can to have immaculate air, immaculate water, and do whatever else we can that's good. You know, we're planting a billion trees, the Billion Tree Project, and it's very exciting for a lot of people. you believe that human pollution, gas, greenhouse gas emissions contributes to the global warming of this planet? I think planet? a lot of things do, but I think to an extent, yes. I think to an extent, yes. But I also think we have to do better management of our forests. Every year, I get the call. California's burning. California's burning. If that was cleaned, if that were, if you had forest management, good forest management, you wouldn't be getting those calls. You know, in Europe, they live their forest cities. They're called forest cities. They maintain their forests. They manage their forests. I was with the head of a major country. It's a forest city. He said, sir, we have 
trees that are far more they, — they ignite much easier than California. There shouldn't be that problem. I spoke with the governor about it. I'm getting along very well with the governor. But I said, you know, at some point, you can't every year have hundreds of thousands of acres of land just burned to the ground. But, sir, That's but, burning down because of a lack of but management. But, sir, if you believe in the science of climate change, why have you rolled back the Obama clean power plan, which limited carbon emissions in power plants. Why have you relaxed... Because it was driving energy prices through the sky. Why have you relaxed fuel economy standards that are going to create more pollution from cars well, and trucks? Well, not really, because what's happening is the car is much less expensive and it's a much safer car, and you're talking about a tiny difference, and then what would happen, because of the cost of the car, you would have at least double and triple the number of cars purchased. We have the old slugs out there that are 10, 12 years old. If you did that, the car would be safer, it would be much cheaper by $3,500. But $3, in, the, in the case of California, they've simply ignored No, but you would your, take a lot of cars off the market because people would be able to afford a car. Now, so, and by the way, we're going to see how that turns out. But a lot of people agree with me, many people. The car has gotten so expensive because they have computers all over the place for an extra little bit okay. of gasoline. And, by the, and, and, and I'm okay with electric cars, too. I think I'm all for electric cars. I've given big incentives for electric cars. But what they've done in California is just all crazy. Right. Vice President Biden, I'd like you to, to respond to the president's climate change record. But I also want to ask you about a concern. You proposed $2 trillion in green jobs. You talk about new limits, not abolishing, but new limits on fracking, ending the use of fossil fuels to generate electricity by 2035, and zero net emission of greenhouse gases by 2050. The president says a lot of these things would tank the economy and cost millions of jobs. He's absolutely wrong, number one. Number two, if in fact, when, when our, during our administration, the Recovery Act, I was able to, I was in charge, able to bring down the cost of renewable energy to cheaper than or as cheap as coal and gas and oil. Nobody's going to build another uh, uh, coal-fired plant in America. No one's going to build another oil-fired plant in America. They're going to move to renewable energy, number one. Number two, we're going to make sure that we are able to take the federal fleet and turn it into a fleet that's run on their electric vehicles, making sure that we can do that. We're going to put 500,000 charging stations and all of the highways that we're going to be building in the future. We're going to build an economy that, in fact, is going to provide for the ability of us to take 4 million buildings and make sure that they, in fact, are weatherized in a way that, in fact, will, they'll, they'll emit significantly less gas and oil because the heat will not be going out. There's so many things that we can do now to create thousands and thousands of jobs. We can get to net zero in terms of energy production by 2035, not only not costing people jobs, creating jobs, creating millions of good paying jobs, not 15 bucks an hour, but prevailing wage by having a new infrastructure that, in fact, is green. And the first thing I will do, I will rejoin the Paris Accord. I will join the Paris Accord because with us out of it, look what's happening. It's all falling apart. And talk about someone who has no, no relationship to, with foreign policy. Brazil, the rainforests of Brazil are being torn down, are being ripped down. More, more carbon is absorbed in that rainforest than every bit of carbon that's emitted in the United States. Instead of doing something about that, I would be gathering up and making sure we had the, com the countries of the world coming up with $20 billion and say, here's $20 billion. Stop, stop te tearing down the forest. And if you don't, then you're going to have significant economic consequences. What about, consequences what about the argument that President Trump basically says that you have to balance environmental interests and economic interests, and he's drawn his line? Well, he hadn't drawn a line. He still, for example, makes sure that we, he wants to make sure that methane's not a problem. We can, you, you can now emit more methane without it being a problem. Methane. Gotcha. This is a guy who says that you don't have to have mileage standards for automobiles that exist now. This is a guy who says that, well, the fact gotcha. that it, it, it's all true. And here's He's the deal. He's talking about the Green he, New Deal. And it's not $2 billion or $20 billion, as you said. I'm it's 
100 trillion dollars. I'm talking about where they the want to Biden rip down plan. buildings and, go. and rebuild the building. No, it's the dumbest, not, most ridiculous. That is not where airplanes are out of business, where two car systems are out, where not they want true. to take out the cows too. Not you know that's true. not true either, right? Not this true. is a this is a 100 simply, trillion. Look, that's more money than our is, country could make. In a hundred years, if we're not going the case. All right, let me, will, let me, let me, let me destroy because, our because I actually, wait a minute, sir. I actually <laughs> have studied your plan, and it includes upgrading four million buildings, weatherizing yes. two million homes over four years, building one and a half million energy efficient homes. So the question becomes, some, the president is saying, I think some people who support the president would say that sounds like it's going to cost a lot of money and hurt the economy. What it's going to do is going to create thousands and millions of jobs, good paying jobs. But let him finish, sir. He doesn't know how to do that. $100 they, trillion. Dollars. The fact is it's going to create millions of good paying jobs and these tax incentives to people, for people to weatherize, which he wants to get, get rid of. It's going to make the economy much safer. Look how much we're paying now to deal with the hurricanes. With the deal with, by the way, he has an answer for hurricanes. He said maybe we should drop a nuclear weapon on them. They may. I oh, never said that that's, at all. He did say You made it up. Uh, and here's the deal. You make up a we, lot of We are going to be in a position where we can create hard, hard, good jobs by making sure the environment is clean and we all are in better shape. We spend billions of dollars now, billions of dollars on floods, hurricanes, rising seas. We're in real trouble. Look what's happened just in the Midwest with these storms that come through and wipe out entire sections and counties in Iowa. They didn't happen before. They're because of global warming. We make up 15 percent of the world's problem. We, in fact, but the, the rest of the world, we've got to get them to come along. That's why we have to get back into, back into the Paris Accord. All right, gentlemen. Well, wait we, a minute, Chris. So why didn't he do it for 47 years? You were vice president. Why didn't you get the world? China sends up real dirt into the air. Russia does, India does, they all do. We're supposed to be good. And by the way, he made a couple of statements. The Green New Deal is a hundred trillion dollars. That is not, not my billion. plan. That's the Green uh, well, New Deal. Well, you want to rebuild every building. Not my plan. Right. I want to rebuild right. every building. If he knew anything to, about, no, no, if he knew anything he made about, a statement about the military. He said I said something about the military. He and his friends made it up, and then they went with it. I never said it. Okay, that is what not he true. Did, Sir, he you're said, done in this segment. He called Mr. the Vice, military Mr. Vice stupid bastards. I, I and he did said not it on say tape. It. He uh, said Mr. stupid uh, bastards. He Sir, said it. stop. I would never say I would that. Play to it. Stop. Play it. Go ahead, Mr. You're Vice President. Uh, answered his his final question. The final question is, I can't remember which of all his rantings. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble That's myself. Right. But, yeah. uh, and, and about the economy and about this question of what it's going to cost. The, the, economy. the economy. I mean, the Green New Deal the, and the, the idea of what, what the, your the environmental changes deal, will do. The Green New Deal will pay for itself as we move forward. We're not going to build plants that, in fact, are great polluting plants. Could you We're support build the Green New Deal? Pardon me? You support that? No, I don't support the Green oh, New Deal. Oh, you don't? Oh, well, well that's a big let, statement. I support that means you the, just the radical left. I, I, su okay. I support oh, the don't. Biden plan that I put forward. Okay. The Biden plan, which is different than what he calls the radical Green New Deal. All right, gentlemen, final segment, election integrity. As we meet tonight, millions of Americans are receiving mail-in ballots or going to vote early. How confident? Should we be that this will be a fair election? And what are you prepared to do over the next five plus weeks? Because it'll not only be to election day, but also counting some ballots, mail in ballots after election day. What are you prepared to do to reassure the American people that the next president will be the legitimate winner of this election in this final segment? Mr. Vice President, you go first. Prepared to let people vote. They should go to IWillVote.com decide how they're going to vote, when they're going to vote, and what means by which they're going to vote. His own Homeland Security Director, and as well as the FBI Director, says there is no evidence at all that mail-in ballots are a source of, of being manipulated and cheating. They said that. 
The fact is that there are going to be millions of people because of COVID that are going to be voting by mail and ballots, like he does, by the way. He sits behind the Resolute desk and sends his ballot to Florida, number one. Number two, we're going to make sure that those people who want to vote in person are able to vote because there are enough poll watchers are there to make sure they can socially distance. The polls are open on time, and their polls stay open until the votes are counted. And this is all about trying to dissuade people from voting because he's trying to con to scare people into thinking that it's not going to be legitimate. Show up and vote. You will determine the outcome of this election. Vote, vote, vote. If you're able to vote early in your state, vote early. If you're able to vote in person, vote in person. Vote whatever way is the best way for you, because you will. He cannot stop you from being able to determine the outcome of this election. And in terms of whether or not when the votes are counted and they're all counted, that will be accepted. If I win, that will be accepted. If I lose, that will be accepted. But by the way, if in fact he says he's not sure what he's going to accept, well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter, because if we get the votes, it's going to be all over. He's going to go. He can't stay in power. It won't happen. It won't happen. So vote. Just make sure you understand you have it in your control to determine what this country is going to look like the next four years. Is it going to change? Or are you going to get four more years of these lies? Mr. President, two minutes. So when I listened to Joe talking about a transition, uh, there's been no transition from when I won. I won that election. And if you look at crooked Hillary Clinton, if you look at all of the different people, uh, there was no transition because they came after me trying to do a coup. They came after me spying on my campaign. They started from the day I won and even before I won, from the day I came down the escalator with our first lady. They were a disaster. They were a disgrace to our country. And we've caught them. We've caught them all. We've got it all on tape. We've caught them all. And by the way, you gave the idea for the Logan Act against General Flynn. You better take a look at that, because we caught you, in a sense. And President Obama was sitting in the office. He knew about it, too. So don't tell me about a free transition. As far as the ballots are concerned, it's a disaster. A solicited ballot OK, solicit it is OK. You're soliciting. You're asking. They send it back. You send it back. I did that. If you have an unsolicited, they're sending millions of ballots all over the country. There's fraud. They found them in creeks. They found some with the name Trump. Just happened to have the name Trump just the other day in a waste paper basket. They're being sent all over the place. They sent two in a Democrat area. They sent out a thousand ballots. Everybody got two ballots. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. The other thing, it's nice on November 3rd, you're watching and you see who won the election. And I think we're going to do well because people are really happy with the job we've done. But you know what? We won't know. We might not know for months because these ballots are going to be all over. Take a look at what happened in Manhattan. Take a look at what happened in New Jersey. Take a look at what happened in Virginia and other places. They're not losing 2 percent, 1 percent, which, by the way, is too much. An election could be won or lost with that. They're losing 30 and 40 percent. It's a fraud and it's a shame. And can you imagine where they say uh, you have to have your ballot in by November 10th? November 10th. That means that's seven days after the election, in theory, should have been announced. OK, we have it major has, states no, with that. I, sir, All run by Democrats. Two minutes. Is two minutes. All you're, run you're, by you're, Democrats. It's President a Trump, it's a rigged I, I, election. I, I, you're going to be able to continue. You have been charging for months that mail-in balloting is going to be a disaster. You say it's rigged, yes. that it's going to lead to fraud. But in 2018, in the last midterm election, 31 million people voted mail-in voting. That was a quarter, more than a quarter, of all the voters that year cast their ballots by mail. Now that millions of mail-in ballots have gone out, what are you going to do about it? And are you counting on the Supreme Court, including a Justice Barrett, to settle any dispute? Yeah, I, th I think I'm counting on them to look at the ballots, definitely. I don't think we'll, I hope we don't need them in terms of the election itself. But for the ballots, I think so. Because what's happening is incredible. I just heard, I read today, where at least 1% of the ballots for 2016 were invalidated. They. They take them. We don't like them. We don't like them. They throw them out left There are millions of ballots going out What you do is you go and vote. You do a solicited ballot, and that's okay, or you go and vote. I'm asking you about the fact that millions of people... You go and vote. You go and vote. Like they Like they used to in the old... You either do, Chris, a solicited ballot where you're sending it in, they're sending it back, and you're sending... 
They have mailmen with lots of it. Did you see what's going on? Take a look at West Virginia, mailmen selling the ballots. They're being sold. They're being dumped in rivers. This is a horrible thing for our country. There is no, this is not, there is no this is evidence not going to end well. There is okay. no evidence this is that. not Vice, going Vice to President end Biden. well. Five states fact, have had mail-in ahead, ballots for the last decade or more. Five, including two Republican states. And you don't have to solicit the ballot. It's sent to you. It's sent to your home. What we're saying is, they're saying is that it has to be a postmark by the time by election day. If it doesn't get in till the seventh, eighth, ninth, it still should be counted. He's just afraid of counting the votes because you're he knows wrong. The outcome. You're wrong. Let, no, I, I want to continue with you on I this, love if, Vice President vote. Biden. Because Chris, he's so wrong in, when he makes a statement no, like that. Excuse me. Vice President Biden, the biggest problem, in fact, over the years with mail-in voting has not been fraud historically. It has been that sizable numbers, sometimes hundreds of thousands of ballots are thrown out because they have not been properly filled out or there is some other irregularity or they missed the deadline. So the question I have is, are you concerned that the Supreme Court with a Justice Barrett will settle any dispute? I'm concerned that any court would settle this because here's the deal. When you, when you file, when you get a ballot and you fill it out, you're supposed to have an affidavit. If you didn't know, you have someone say that this is me. You should be able to, if in fact you can verify that's you when the, before the ballot is thrown out, that's sufficient to be able to count the ballot because someone made a mistake and not dotting the correct I. Who they voted for, testify, say who they voted for, say it's you, that is totally legitimate. All right. Excuse final, me, no, no, no. when you I have, have a 80 final, million I, ballots I have a final sent question. in and swamping I, the system, I, I, you, 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 you know it can't be done. You know it can't. And already all right. there's been so fraud. Now, mail service final, delivers wait a minute, gentlemen, in the final million million question is, in, in eight ballots. states, we can keep talking. It's, it's in a, eight a, states, it's election workers are sure. prohibited currently by law, eight states, from even beginning to process ballots, even take them out of the envelopes and yes. flatten them until Election Day. That means that it's likely, because there's going to be a huge increase in mail-in balloting, that we are not going to know on election night who the winner is, that it could be days, it could be weeks. It could be months. Until we find out who the, the, the new president is. So I, first for you, sir, finally for the, for the vice president, I hope neither of you will interrupt the other. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm during this extended period, not to engage in any civil unrest, and will you pledge tonight that you will not declare victory until the election has been independently certified? President Trump, I'm you go first. I'm urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully, because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. As you know, today there was a big problem. In Philadelphia, they went in to watch. They were they're called poll watchers, a very safe, very nice thing. They were thrown out. They weren't allowed to watch. You know why? Because bad things happen in Philadelphia, bad things. And Are I you- am urging I am urging my people. I hope it's going to be a fair election. If it's a fair You're election, what? I am 100 percent on board. But if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. And I'll tell and what, you what, what does that from mean, a common sense, does that mean you're going to tell, tell your means. people to take to it the street? It means you have a fraudulent election. You're and sending you out 80 do? million ballots. They're not, they're not equipped to, these people aren't equipped to handle it, number one. Number two, okay. they cheat. They cheat. Hey, they found ballots in a waste paper basket three so, days ago, and they all had the name right. military ballots. They were military. They all had the name Trump on them. Uh, Vice President Biden. You think Biden, that's good? Uh, Vice President Biden, final question for you. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm while the vote is counted? And will you pledge not to declare victory until the election is independently certified? Yes. And here's the deal. We count the ballots, as you pointed out. Some of these ballots in some states can't even be opened until Election Day. And if there's thousands of ballots, it's going to take time to do it. And by the way, our military, they've been voting by ballots for since the end of the Civil War, in effect. In effect. And, that's, and that's what's happen, going to happen. Why was it not? Why is it for them somehow not fraudulent? It's the same process. It's honest. No one has established at all that there is fraud related to mail-in ballots, that the, somehow it's a fraudulent process. It's already been established. It's, it's, uh, Take a look at uh, Carolyn uh, Maloney's I, I, race. I, I asked you, you had an opportunity to respond. Go ahead. They have no idea what Vice happened. Vice President Biden, go ahead. 
He has no idea what he's talking about. Here's the deal. The fact is, I will accept it, and he will too. You know why? Because once the winner is declared after all the, all the ballots are counted, all the votes are counted, that'll be the end of it. That'll be the end of it. And if it's me, in fact, fine. If it's, if it's not me, I'll support the outcome. And I'll be a president not just for the Democrats. I'll be a president for Democrats and Republicans. And this guy, I want to see fact, an honest okay. ballot okay. count. Gentlemen, we, you say that's the end Chris, of it? This is the I end of this see an debate? honest ballot count. We're going to leave he it does there. Too. Uh, to be continued as in more debates as we go on. Uh, president Trump, Vice President Biden, it's been an interesting hour and a half. I want to thank you both for participating in the first of three debates that you have agreed to engage in. We want to thank Case Western Reserve University yes. and the Cleveland Clinic for hosting this event. The next debate, sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates, will be one week from tomorrow, October 7th, at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. The two vice presidential nominees, Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris, will debate at 9 p.m. Eastern that night. We hope you watch. Until then, thank you and good night.